Welcome to another information presentation for EDET 620, Educational Technology. This particular presentation has to do with an important skill that is required in order to perform other skills related to this class, and that is to be able to recognize the different types of skills or the different types of learning outcomes that are present in instructional objectives. Now, um, this skill is very important in order to be able to perform um, some specific aspects of being able to use technology to improve the instructional practice of teachers, um, which is why it is presented now. Um, in the next project that you are going to undertake um, that involves improving your um, practice as, a, as an educator, with respect to instruction has to do with being able to use technology to improve or increase the um, e effectiveness of instructional activities and, and information. And one thing that you are going to uh, learn about in the next project is that uh, the most effective instructional activities are those that are specific to the types of skills that are trying to be facilitated. Now, in general, um, the types of learning or the types of outcomes that teachers are, are charged with facilitating reflect skills, knowledge, and attitudes of the learners. And there are different ways of categorizing skills, knowledge, and attitudes. Something that you might already be familiar with is Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives. And these are types of skills that have been um, ranked or, or organized from the most cognitively um, demanding at the top to the least cognitively, cognitively demanding um, at the bottom or, or vice versa. You, you might be familiar with terminology such as knowledge, understanding, application, analysis, evaluation. Um, synthesis was a type of outcome that used to be included in, in the taxonomy, but it has since been revised um, by the original creators of the taxonomy um, to include create as one of the highest order outcomes that is identified in the taxonomy. But this is actually not an organizational scheme that is used a lot in the field of instructional design, primarily, I think, because there is a lot of discrepancy and ambiguity about differences between application, analysis, evaluation, and creation. And so it is actually a lot easier to design instructional events f that are specific to different outcome types if you, ex if you regard the outcome types as um, in, in categories that have been identified by, um, by Robert Gagné and others like him. And so what I'm going to do is present just very simply some of the different types of outcomes that are included in this representation, which reflect verbal information, intellectual skills, and there are different types of intellectual skills that will be addressed, attitudes, and motor skills. Verbal information is the first and most cognitively sort of simple um, type of skill in this taxonomy. And verbal information represents um, information that learners must be able to state. That includes things like facts, dates, people, names, principles, etc. This is sometimes referred to in the literature as declarative knowledge. So verbal information is one type of learning outcome. As indicated, intellectual skills are another type of learning outcome, and there are in, in general, five different types of intellectual skills from least cognitively demanding to the most. And so the first uh, and sort of lowest order intellectual skill are discriminations. And discriminations um, represent the ability to distinguish objects, features, or symbols. In this case, being able to distinguish between something that is, that is black and something that is not black. That's a discrimination. Concrete concepts are the next level of intellectual skill, and these rep represent objects, classes of objects, object features, and relations that can actually be pointed out and identified. 
So in, this, in, the, in, the, in the case of this particular graphic, a chair represents a concrete concept because a chair is something that you can point to and say, that is a chair. Defined concepts are a little more intellectually uh, challenging in that they represent objects, principles, classes, features, and relations that cannot be identified by pointing them out. They must be defined. So in the case of this particular picture, um, you might see an example of the defined concept freedom. That is something being released um, from captivity. And so freedom would reflect a defined concept. It, it's something that you can't point out and say that is, that is freedom. You can say there is an example of freedom. The next level of intellectual skill um, in terms of cognitive demand are rules. And rules make it possible to do something using symbols, most commonly the symbols of language and, and numbers or mathematics. And rules include the application of single principles to explain, describe, or predict phenomena or events. Rules actually make it possible for students to respond to a class of things with a, with a class of performances. So in, in this graphic, we have one simple mathematical rule being applied. Um, finally, we have higher order rules, which reflect um, the application of more than one rule of principle to solve problems, to perform tasks, or explain, describe, and predict phenomena or, or, or events. So in, in the case of higher order rules, the learners must also decide which rules or principles must be utilized in order to perform particular tasks, or explain, describe, or predict phenomena or events. And so in this particular graphic, we have um, the uh, um, tackling a very complex mathematical um, problem represents the application of a lot of individual or discrete mathematical rules. Attitudes are the next category of, um, uh, of outcome type. And attitudes represent intrinsically motivated choices that people make. And so I have a, a picture here of, of, of a menu. And there are many factors that might influence or affect what somebody might choose on a menu, but, but a menu is just a good example of, of making a particular choice. And if you think about it, attitudes represent some of the most important outcomes that teachers are tasked with facilitating. Um, it's one thing to help facilitate the skills of reading, for example, but it is certainly as important to um, help people make the choice to read when they have a, when other choices um, are available to them. Finally, we have motor skills, which represent physical activities that require movement and coordination of all or or part of the body. And you have obvious motor skills like um, like track and field skills, or more subtle motor skills like being able to tie your shoe, or being able to use a, a microscope um, properly and effectively. Um, that constitutes, again, um, a collection of physical activities that require m movement in order, to, in order to successfully accomplish those tasks. So those uh, re represent the different types of learning outcomes um, that can be uh, sort of uh, thought about, uh, verbal information, intellectual skills, attitudes, or motor skills. And, and, and in the next presentation, the next video presentation, um, you will be presented with strategies that are designed specifically to facilitate um, outcomes that are representative of, of one of these types of skills.